Hello everyone and welcome to Canadian Tire Motorsport Park and the final round of our 2019 Liquamali Pro Sport Bike National Championship Series. I'm your National Series announcer Frank Wood and I'm joined by my color commentator Colin Fraser. Today's race is presented by BMW Motorrad. This broadcast is brought to you by Mopar Express Lane, Parts Canada and Dunlop. One race left to run here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. And of course, the question is, can Will Hornblower cling on to his championship lead? He was a pretty smart guy yesterday, and now he's trying to finish it up. And of course, Thomas Kazaz, exactly a year ago, put the exclamation mark on his championship with a dominant runaway win here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. I got a hunch it's not going to play that way in 2019. Well, we'll see how it plays out. Uh, a great day yesterday here at uh, Canadian Tire Motorsport Park and terrific racing, a wonderful fan turnout. It was unbelievable the number of fans we have here to watch the uh, final round, in this case, the Liquid Molly Pro Sport Bike uh, final. Race number seven, Colin, in 2019. Man, this year has gone by so quickly. It's been so successful. And as the series uh, progresses, and we see this with pretty much every class, there's sort of a small group of points leaders who gradually pull themselves ahead of everybody else. And of course, it's Kazas, our reigning double champion, Hornblower, who's trying to take that title, and Sebastian Tremblay, who scored that oh-so-impressive win on his Kawasaki 636 ZX6R Ninja yesterday. Yeah, that's the uh, second national championship win for uh, uh, Sebastian Tremblay as he stood on top of the podium uh, at Atlantic Motorsport Park as well down at Shubenacony, Nova Scotia at round four. And we should say something about David McKay because he hung in for quite a long time. It was a very important ride for him. We were on board, which reminded me. So he was fourth, but with the leaders for a lot of that race yesterday working the draft. And McKay's Kawasaki is pretty quick. So it was two Yamahas, two Kawasaki's yesterday, the two Yamahas battling for the championship. The Kawasaki's looking for Brad rights and of course Tremblay trying to come back from a horrible start to the season really not of his own doing but uh, he's got a plate in his shoulder that reminds him that things haven't gone well in 2019. Yeah he's still not 100% but he's a heck of a lot better than he was at St. Eustache and he put it on the podium there so uh, don't count him out uh, by any means. Yeah has there been a more popular result in 2019 on the tour in any of our touring classes no. No. where anybody was as well recognized and, and is just generally elation about his performance yeah, and uh, and the funny thing is, that was the first race he didn't get caught up in someone else's crash, but he came within inches of getting caught out, and we're under starter's orders, so I better let you do your work. <laughs> Here we go, under starter's orders, as you said, Colin, and in, in moments we'll be looking at that International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, uh, Starting Lights. Uh, they have sponsored both the Starting Lights and the Countdown Clock uh, for the final four rounds of the 2019 uh, Mopar Canadian Superbike National Series. Uh, they sponsored us at the two rounds at... Uh, Shubenacadie, and now we will go to those aforementioned lights. The uh, riders will be focusing on, there we have them. The lights are starting to come on. This is F1 style, of course. You've seen this before, fans. Lights are all on. The engine revs are starting to build a bit. Saw a little bit of creeping on the line there. Nothing serious, though. We are away and running, and we are charging down into turn number one, and it is Sebastian Trombley who's taken the race lead. Uh, Hornblower sitting in second spot, and Tommy Kaz has just sticked in behind him there, so he is running in third just now. Up over Looking turn two. Backwards from our leader Tremblay and Hornblower is on his tail end. This is exactly yesterday's race. Uh, already they've they've grown into that pattern that we uh, knew so well yesterday. And if I'm, I think it's Louis Raffle on his Honda CBR in fifth and they, yep. they these guys behind need to get organized because they are going to get scrubbed off in a hurry. But uh, McKay is sitting back in fourth spot. Sorry about that. McKay sitting in, in fourth spot, and this is a much stronger run we see from David McKay uh, than we saw yesterday, and he has got to stay with those top three riders in front of him, and likewise and for Louis Bauer, Raffer. Bauer in six, so another good run for him on that Yamaha. So uh, some decent guys trying to hang in, but it, yesterday, mm -hmm. man, did those top four go. And there's Hornblower, our points leader, having a look on Tremblay. Pulls up alongside him as they uh, come down the Mario Andretti straightaway and then uh, squeezes in behind him and uh, gets a bit of a pull into turn number eight. And look at McKay moving by. Takes the inside line on Tommy Casas and David McKay, the Mac attack, has moved into third spot. Nice move. Beautiful shot from second place Hornblower. Look oh, at Casas. Wow, Casas now to the inside. My goodness gracious, Casas returning the favor just as quickly as I can get the words out of my mouth. And we have a great battle going on for third spot already and we're only on lap two. And I was really enjoying that shot before the pass. I thought it was terrific. And 
and uh, those onboards really just give you such a notion of what it's really like to be on a bike around here, although nothing gives you an idea other than being here of how deep this plunge is. We're in the middle of the double apex turn two. Yeah, that is a, quite a slope indeed, uh, and again, you don't pick it up so much on the camera, but if you're on track and, and uh, with the uh, drift cameras, of course, we do get uh, more of a sense of it. Now we're on board with uh, David McKay once more. We're following Tommy Tass as he wears the number one plate right now, but uh, at the end of this day, it may well be transferred to someone else, and I'm suggesting that maybe uh, Will Hornblower. And we have Rafa in fifth and Bauer in sixth, and they go! Oh, down goes McKay! McKay, the front end went right out from under him. He got, oh, he's scrambling, Colin. He's trying to run to that bike and get it restarted. you got to give him credit for that. Man, what a tough break for David McKay as he was uh, in the midst of one of the finest rides we've seen him on in the 2019 season. Tough luck for the Mac attack. Well, we often hear racing jargon and people kind of wonder what phrases mean. Well, if you wondered what a front end tuck is like, that's classic. That was full, exactly it. Full lean, working the very edge of that Dunlop slick, and everybody we're watching right now is at the very edge of the performance, what the bike, what the tire, what they're capable of, and McKay was just pushing that last little bit. He Oof. was in the fight for the lead, and I thought he was riding so well. He was a little bit better than yesterday, maybe a little more savvy, so it's a shame, and of course, we saw this with Demeray at our last that's round, right. right? Like, it was such an important ride for them to get, like, you know, Kazas has seen McKay pass him. From now on, he knows that's a problem. Yeah. Yeah, it would have been a breakthrough uh, ride for uh, for David McKay. And I'm going to suggest that perhaps trail breaking has caught him out on that one. And it looks like uh, Hornblower now has made the move. Hornblower has displaced uh, Sebastian Trombley back into second spot. And our points leader now has the point. So i got to think Hornblower's got the tires to come in. He's satisfied with his pace. And he's thinking, eh, you know, Trombley was hatching the egg a little too much. We need to make this work. We need to move it along a little bit. And what's interesting is compared to most people, Trombley doesn't turn early. He doesn't block he doesn't do any of that he just rides his line and if you want to pass him you know what you're going to have to do but it's not going to be easy because he does not make mistakes we talked about it yesterday when we were watching round six of the liquid molly pro sport bike national championships how uh, sebastian trombley is such a pleasure to watch him ride and if you track his lines he's running on times and he is on the move right now as he pulls up alongside and makes the pass on will hornblower going into turn number eight tommy kaz is sitting back and getting the best view of that one and these three riders have made this a three horse race the around guy. the outside in turn eight and it didn't look dramatic at all and, and trust me if you were on the bike it would have felt that way and uh, now we're back to what I would argue has been status quo at the fast tracks and that's Tremblay looking Hornblower on the inside of one that's not a typical spot but yesterday we saw passes work on the inside of one in both pro sport bike and our other pro class the Mopar CSBK national feature and uh, you know yesterday's races were you know, varied from unbelievably good to incredibly good. <laughs> <laughs> We're in third spot right now with Tommy Kazas, where we were riding with the champion just for a moment, and now Hornblower is definitely not letting uh, Sebastian get away, that uh, is for sure. And likewise with Tommy Kazas, he's just sitting there waiting for a chance to uh, stuff it in somewhere. If Hornblower is worried about trying to win his first national championship, it doesn't show. He looks really smooth. There's not a lot to pick between the riders or their bikes. Hornblower has been in the conversation, particularly at this track, Canadian Tire Motorsport Park, for years, yeah. you know, we've seen him with Kazas, uh, we've seen him with Card, we've right. seen a yep. number of fast guys, and he's always been comfortable back in the Reedman days, or the, even the Christie days, he was around for those, so he's a, a well-experienced guy, and his bikes are usually reasonably fast, we know he's been scrambling around to try and get a package that will work, because I'm not sure he was going to do the whole season this year until he won the opener. Yeah. And that opener, there was some drama in that, as you may remember, he wasn't there for Saturday. He had to uh, start at the very back of the grid on Sunday as he had a wedding to go to on Saturday in Sarnia, Ontario, and had to drive all the way back for, to uh, Shannonville for the uh, national championship final on the Sunday. And, and so he grew up in Sarnia, but he doesn't actually live there. And uh, and who would have thought that you'd miss Saturday, you know, start from the back and win your first national on Sunday. Yeah. What a story. Yeah, no kidding. His dad was uh, overwhelmed at that one and, uh, of course, uh, very pleased with the way uh, Will has developed into a rider. And as uh, Will was uh, talking to me uh, yesterday after the race, he says, you know, this is a work in progress. I've been at this game for, uh, for 10 years and I've had a lot of bad luck and things seem to be turning around this year. And Will Hornblower, they certainly do seem to be turning around. He's having a great ride right now. Well, Tromblay's a, a veteran of the top pro classes. He's won uh, won 600 races, our middleweight Liquid Molly races. He's been on the podium in Pro Superbike. He's ridden a variety of motorcycles. But what's interesting about Hornblower and Kazas is they came from the Honda Spec Series, That's the 125s right, yeah. and the 250s. So these uh, are second and third place guys 
with, you know, 115, 120 horsepower, started out with 12. <laughs> <laughs> I remember very well Tommy Cassis, but I'd forgotten about Hornblower running in that spec series as well. And that spec series did develop a lot of talent. Stacy Nesbitt was uh, one of the riders that came out of that uh, series as well. How and about Stevie Bodie Nickerson, Edie? Bodie Eady, thank you very much. We could go on for quite some time as far as uh, the riders that have uh, come out of spec series racing. Uh, the Honda 125 class and they uh, moved into the CBR 250 class and then we had the Ninja class for a couple of years from Canadian Kawasaki Motors. So uh, all of those classes have contributed into uh, the development of many of our pro riders. Hornblower having a look to the inside of turn number one on Sebastian Trombley. Nothing to be had there. And we should mention while we're in the middle of talking oh, about man. or touting the uh, growth of the uh, spec classes and the smaller displacement, we have two young men backed by Yamaha named Leclerc who are both having unbelievable seasons and they're finishing up here at their home track and at least one of them is going to win a championship likely. Yeah, and it won't be long before we see the, uh, those same two brothers uh, in this class. Now we're looking at back at uh, Will Hornblower now as we uh, go underneath the bridge and head down that daunting downhill turn. And wasn't it... Um uh, Jackie Stewart that commented on that as being one of the most challenging corners in, in Grand Prix racing, the F1 uh, driver. Yeah, the one, the one he actually uh, made a big fuss over in Sports Illustrated way back when was turn two. Right. And, uh, and I think there were six or seven turns with very nice illustrations, and those were uh, one of the sev six or seven in the world he picked was turn two at Mosport. Man, our fourth place rider, I think, is still Louis Raffer, but he is way back there. Check this out now as they are perfectly side by side over the top of the hill, and Will Hornblower has gathered up the lead. Sebastian Trombley shunted back into second spot and Tommy Kaz is still sitting back there in third waiting for something to, uh, to be offered. Having a good look at our second place Kawasaki Ninja of Mr. Trombley. He was our winner yesterday and uh, he is uh, an exhibition in how to do this and he has shown a number of people how to do it. He knows half the paddock and probably has taught most of them at various racing schools and track days. As you can see him spin in the tire, that big Dunlop slip up, slick on the back of that Kawasaki and he is working at really hard and and of course I have to mention Ooh. that there's always going to be some concern if you're uh, not careful. Whoa. Tommy Kaz is on the move now and he moves on the inside of uh, Sebastian Trombley. I thought he was going to gather up Hornblower at the same time. Kaz is on the gas and on the move. Moved in second spot now. That was one of the most ambitious passes we've seen this weekend. That was aggressive and, and it worked just fine. There was no real drama. He didn't get sideways but he went off the line and laid on the brakes and uh, if you remember at our Shannonville opener off the line and late on the brakes didn't go great. No. Yeah, we could ask Sebastian Trombley about that as well, couldn't we? Um, nonetheless, you talked about the reception that uh, Trombley got at uh, St. Estash for the third place finish yesterday here at the uh, Victory Podium at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. Also, he got a huge ovation uh, when he stood on top of the box on that day. Check this action out now as Tommy Cazes has taken the number one Yamaha right into the race lead. The Blue Crew uh, Parts Canada, Yamaha Canada sponsored champion now has the race lead. And you've got to say that it's interesting, this group of three, there's no black hats, right? They're all very popular guys, uh, not making a lot of enemies, uh, and, and maybe not bouncing off each other to the degree this class often does, although there's been some of that. <laughs> Speaking of black hats, both Tommy Kazes and, uh, whoa, 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 here comes, no, didn't do it. I thought Hornblower had something happening going up over the top of that hill, but that didn't happen. But I was going to comment that Tommy Kazes, uh, uh, with sponsorship from Parts Canada, and Trevor Daly uh, have both chosen the HJC helmet with the Deadpool uh, design on it. Yeah, I don't I don't know. I think I like the one from Monsters, <laughs> Inc. from Schumann Ackney. I really, really Here enjoyed that. Here comes Hornblower. Hornblower on the move. Is he? Oh, man, I thought he was right alongside us at a moment there. Yeah, chasing and, uh, down. and uh, Tom is hard to pass, and this is starting to remind me of uh, Schumann Ackney on Saturday when Hornblower tried everything and he could get beside Thomas, but he couldn't seem to make TV Tommy go behind him. <laughs> and when they get into 5A and uh, and B, of course, the line there looks like there's a big hole that you could dive into, but it's not there because the racing line is going to cut you off in a hurry. Hornblower on the move again. Pulls out a little bit early, perhaps, but he would know better than I as he pulls up alongside Tommy Casas, and I believe, yes, he has made the pass, or has he? Casas around the outside. No, he snicks in behind Hornblower, and they remain in that order. Hornblower, Casas, and Tremblay running one, two, three, and these guys have left the rest of the field far behind. And right now, Tremblay is just taking 
it easy. He's breathing the tires. He's having a look. I think he's pretty comfortable with his package. And of course, it's easy for me to say that on Sunday because on the race Saturday, he demonstrated that he has a good setup. And look at Hornblower got oh, wide wow. and won. Did he ever? And he just, just about got gathered up. I think Tommy Kaz has got him. Yeah, Tommy's got him on that one. And I thought uh, Sebastian perhaps was going to uh, make a move. We got a bit of a chess game on the go here, Colin. And you got to mention that these onboard cameras are wide angle lenses. So when the bike looks close, you're practically in a position to touch it, right? And, uh, you know, these guys have to slipstream. You have to pull into the calm air behind the bike in front to get the most out of your motorcycle here at, at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. And it's, you know, easy to forget how tricky it is to be a bike length, half a bike length behind somebody riding as hard as you can. You yeah. know, it's very difficult. And here, right here, wow, launching up the back straight, you've got to get your timing perfect. you got to get tucked in. You look at the guys. They've turned their legs. They've turned their elbows. They're doing everything they can. Tommy Cass has got a really good drive out of uh, five that time and uh, he continues to lead uh, up the uh, Mario Andretti straightaway and here comes Hornblower again. Man, that guy's got a little bit of horsepower available. Yeah, I don't, I don't know there's much difference there and uh, you know, we've, we've been discussing all season long, you know, early on it seemed like Tremblay had the edge and pure performance uh, and, and again, I, he might still, but I feel like he's just being calm right now and of course he's the guy who'll do that. Well, the 636 is noted for its mid-range. It's got a lot of grunt pulling out of corners and what have you. So, And uh, Turcott Performance has done a fabulous job, but not only uh, Sebastian Trombley's bike, but they have a fleet of Kawasaki's that are very, very well prepared. Well, and, and I, I think we have to mention some of the, their fleet isn't, aren't Kawasaki's. They have some other well, brands too. They, yes. They're primarily known for their Kawasaki's, right. but they have built some other, like, I, I mean, and most of the bikes that come out of that group are really nice looking too. Look at that shot, Colin. There's nobody. Wherever our fourth place rider is, he is definitely not in. It's unfortunate because we do have a full field of sport bikes contesting this national championship race, but it's often been said that it only takes two motorcycles to make a motorcycle race. In this case, we've got a devil of a motorcycle race on our hands and there's only three riders involved just now. Hornblower being a little bit careful here, uh, staying to the inside, and that pays off a bit in terms of the line being smoother, but of course the geometry is better on that wide line that Casas exploits. Now we're looking backwards from our leading Yamaha R6 to the slightly older R6 of our points leader, Hornblower, and Tremblay just getting towed along there, enjoying the ride, thinking about what he's going to do late in the race. Hornblower is racing. This is really cool. You know, with the points lead that he enjoys right now, he could easily circulate back uh, all by himself in fourth position with nobody challenging from the back and nothing to worry about up front but he is a racer and he's racing for this championship well and i don't want to be corny about this but in, if things are going well the bike's working well you've got to set up you know the tires it's it's actually easier to run the pace you're used to being careful can get you into horrible trouble and we've seen guys who usually win trying to finish 10th or 11th and they're racing with people they don't know and and well off their game and not smooth and consistent they're nervous and i, I honestly think you know good for hornblower he knows these guys well. He's comfortable with them. And I uh, think you know, if you want to make sure that you're close to Tommy, this would be the way to do it. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> Working now through uh, turn number three and uh, getting ready to take the run down underneath the bridge and uh, through turn four. And of course, that'll dump us down into Moss's Corner, perhaps one of the most famous corners in North American racing, uh, named after the famous uh, British F1 uh, car driver, Sterling Moss. Once again, we... lining up for the dyno run up, the Mario Andretti <laughs> back straight here. Everybody trying to make their tire just about perfect in terms of not spinning it too much, not using too much, but getting the drive. And of course, how things look up this hill has so much to do with that very slow exit of Moss. And it's a steep hill, so torque comes into play. And here's Tremblay deciding to join the party again. Yes, he did. And he moves into second spot and displaces Hornblower back into third. One of the things that has changed on this day compared oh. to yesterday's <laughs> race is, is the uh, wind. We had quite a bit of uh, crosswind as uh, Yes, he's got it done, Sebastian Trombley. Wow, he pulled that one out. I, I don't know where he got that one from, but that was a very well-executed pass. And the funny thing was he was a little bit sideways, which is very rare, and he got two people in three corners. And for Trombley to be sliding the bike, you know he picked up the pace. But look at that. It's like he decided now it's time to go again, and bang, bang, back in the lead. In the lead indeed is Sebastian Trombley on the Kawasaki and we're on board now with uh, Will Hornblower and the Bickle Racing sponsored uh, Yamaha R6 as he tags along in uh, third spot in behind Tommy Casas. Looking at our reigning champion, our two-time champion, and he's under severe pressure from our theoretical about to be champion. 
Well, Orbler's got to be careful. You know, that's what I was referring to when I said he could be uh, riding a much more safer race. Um, his uh, string of luck has been pretty good lately, but as you well know, Colin, he's also had his fair share of bad luck, and uh, this is kind of inviting it, if you ask me. I think it's best to just try and run your pace, and arguably right now, uh, where he's third and right behind Casas, who could beat him for the title, but it's going to be really... Tom, Tommy needs a bunch of things to happen, and none of them are happening right now. And we are coming up on traffic at a most on inopportune time, right in the middle of turn number eight, and Tommy Casas gets by cleanly, as does uh, Will... Uh, sorry, Sebastian Trombley. Now Hornblower's gotten by as well. So that rider holding his line, which is exactly what we want him to do, and the faster riders have uh, gotten past cleanly. No split on that. That one and right now Thomas is thinking maybe they struggled right I got him late into eight maybe it was a battle for them and I've got a little time but he doesn't it, di it didn't help he was a little ambitious it was a good move but it didn't generate a gap and of course here it's very hard to break away because you get to that back straight and you slipstream and it pulls everybody together Tommy Casas is leading over Sebastian Trombley with only two laps left in this race. Tommy a little bit wide there, and uh, I'm not sure Sebastian was having a look at the uh, open space available to him, but uh, nothing uh, moving at this point in time at any rate. But uh, Sebastian Trombley now up and over the hill and down that daunting dive down into there. Reminds me sometimes of the corkscrew at... Uh, at uh, Laguna Seca, that way that corner comes down. Now onto the back straightaway again. And remember, this is the second last time these riders will take a run up here. The next time around, they'll be running towards the checkered flag. When they get up onto the front straightaway after this run, they'll be getting the last lap flag. And here we go as Sebastian Trombley gets a little bit of a toe and then swings out, makes the pass on Tommy Casas. We're on board right now with Will Hornblower, and he looks to be making no. Nothing uh, happening there, but Tommy Casa stays on the gas and is right on the rear wheel of Sebastian Trombley as they work their way into turn number nine. On the gas, a quick short shoot between nine and ten. They flip it over to the right-hand side, back on the gas again, down the front straightaway, and uh, Trombley getting himself a little aerodynamic there. He tucks down in behind the plexiglass, and here we go for the final go-round, Colin. Yeah, and I, I'm... I think your concern about Hornblower is about to be revealed. I have a hunch he's not going to stick his neck out at this point. And uh, Kazas has tried a couple of things, and they haven't really worked that well. And, uh, you know, he was quite quick to try and pull into Tremblay's draft up the back straight. Makes me think that he's not confident he's got much for Tremblay at the top. Well, if he can get in behind Tremblay and then get that toe that we often talk about, perhaps his momentum coming up over the hill. There's Kazas and Hornblower completely side by side there as Hornblower pulls up and makes a challenge down into two once more. Sorry, uh, so my theory about Hornblower is going to hang back was <laughs> really a bad judgment. <laughs> He's a racer, man. He's going for it. Right from start to finish, whether this be the last race of the year or the first race, it's always the same way with Will Hornblower. It's gas on and let's go for it. And this is basically the order of late in the first race of the year. The yeah. same three guys. Very, very similar indeed. As I as was uh, commenting, the, the big difference here is that we don't have the wind that we had yesterday that was pushing them around a bit on the... Uh, the, inner, on the uh, Mario Andretti straight away as Tommy Casas. Oh man, I thought he was going to swing line there and take the inside line going into turn number nine. That didn't happen, but he looks to the inside of 10. He's got it. He moves into first spot. Now, look at, oh man, we talked about the grunt of that Kawasaki. Sebastian Trombley simply turned the throttle on and out accelerated Tommy Casas. Now, admittedly, Casas had gone way wide there, but uh, man, what a finish. Sebastian Trombley has captured the win for the second day in a row. Now, he won at round six yesterday, and he has captured the win here today. And, and no question about it, you know, had his luck been a little bit better this year, Colin, he would be definitely contesting the national championship. When we were at the regional opener for the race super series at Shannonville uh, early in the season, Trombley looked so fantastic. And, uh, you know, he's had a rough year, but that's another solid victory, and he is definitely amongst, if not the pace setter at this point in the season, but he doesn't have the points from early on. Looking at the rest of the top 10 and look if you look in the back of the shot there's David McKay back yeah. on his bike gonna ride in after that unfortunate crash because he uh, he really looked like he could get a podium spot today yeah Captain yeah, McKay was riding very well indeed most unfortunate there is Will Hornblower our new series champion and let us go to the podium and visit Frank will talk to the champ what a tremendous race again Did you have fun Oh, nothing but Frank. It was a ride out there. I knew, obviously, championships on the mind. I'm just blown away right now. Um, 
yeah, the race was, was a ton of fun, but uh, these guys really wanted it and I didn't want to get in the way. Um, just trying to look at the big picture. It would have been awesome to, to win the championship on the, on, uh, the top step, but these guys were, were moving really good. I made a couple of mistakes that kind of spooked me. So I was just, uh, you know, last couple of laps was just bringing home. I knew it was, was just us three. So when, uh, when, when Tommy got by me and the Spashman got by me, I was like, cool, you know, I can just kind of run my own thing. Um, yeah, I was just trying to run, you know, consistent, smooth as I'd been doing all year and um, worked out. We're on the box and uh, clinched the championship. Congratulations. Congratulations. Will Hornblower in third place. We'll now go over and have a chat with our outgoing champion, Tommy Casas. And Tommy, man, you guys... <laughs> You've obviously made an impact in this uh, series over the last couple of years. Yeah, Frank, I'm back. Uh... Uh, that was a fun race. My Yamaha Parts Canada R6 was working phenomenal, and uh, we gave it all in that race, but uh, these guys were running really well there, and Sebastian rode a great race. I tried at the end there, but I uh, just couldn't get the drive, and, uh, you know, we ended up second, and uh, unfortunately this year we made a mistake at the beginning of the season, and that cost us the championship, but uh, big shout-out to, uh, to Will there. I'm super happy that it's a fellow Yamaha rider out there, so congrats to him, and... Uh, you know, I'm just happy to be up here and hopefully we can bring it back on the podium for Superbike. Great stuff. Thank you very much, Tommy, and congratulations for your second place finish. Up to the top of the box, haven't I met you here before? Sebastian Trombley, great to see you back on top of the box again, second time this weekend, man. Yeah, of course, it's uh, always a pleasure to be on top of the box here. Uh, it was a great race between the three of us, a lot more passes than yesterday. It was challenging. So I sit there in third for a couple of laps to uh, try to save it, saving my tire for the end of the race. And it, it worked out pretty well. Three, four, three laps from the end, I took the lead and tried to keep it. And uh, it worked pretty good. Uh, yeah, no, the, the, my two car performance, Kawasaki, uh, worked very, very well this weekend. We're pleased to have a, our first perfect weekend. So it's, it's it's, it's pretty incredible. Well done. Sebastian Tremblay takes the win here today in round seven of the 2019 Liquamali Pro Sport Bike National Championships. Will Hornblower, the new champion in third spot. Tommy Casas, the outgoing champion in second. And on top of the box, Turcotte performance rider, Sebastian Tremblay. Right now, I'd like to call upon um, Jason Belays, if you would please, uh, you present that number one plate <laughs> to Will Hornblower and this will be a great great photo op right there Jason Belays who has played such a large part over the last couple of years in Mopar CSPK particularly of course in the Liquid Molly Pro Sport Bike class well, you see that shot of Will and Jason, and it reminds you why it's worth it to go to the dentist. <laughs> so let's talk about our championship standings. Hornblower, pretty decisive victory at 319. Kazas gave it his all at 286. Tremblay climbing all the way back up to third. McKay, fourth, but he was as high as second this season. Mounier, what a great year he had. Rafa, consistent, even though he's dealing with some medical issues. Demre missed this event, but was so impressive at our last round at Shubanaki. Coelho, Bauer, and Leviathan. Uh, complete our top 10 in a very strong season of Liquamali middleweight action in the CSBK Tour. Well, that puts a wrap on round seven of the Liquamali Pro Sport Bike National Championships and indeed a wrap on the 2019 season. The next time we broadcast to you will be for the 2020 season and that is the 40th anniversary of Mopar CSBK in Canada. Can't wait for it. See you soon. Today's race is presented by BMW Motorrad. This broadcast is brought to you by Mopar Express Lane, Parts Canada, and Dunlop.